All across the globe, people are learning to make jewellery from home, creating their own small and wonderful businesses with a simple toolkit and a passion for making sparkly things. I've invited three jewellers to my home for three days of making, learning, creating, and some serious relaxation. This is the Jewellers Retreat. Over the next few days, three budding jewellers will make three projects. From pendants and earrings to engagement rings and bangles, they will cover it all. With only a limited time to complete each project, the pressure will be on. But we'll be cheering them on every step of the way and we'll get to see just how some of this amazing jewellery is made. Meet Sally Coston, graphic designer turned part-time jeweller based in London's Clerkenwell. Marquetta Garnet, Cornwall-based part-time waiter, full-time mum and budding jeweller who loves to make. And Jasmine Butler, Brighton-based art teacher with a thriving jewellery business on the side. These jewellers have all completed a one-year diploma in silver jewellery at Jewellers Academy and have come such a long way since starting out. I can't wait to see how they get on with their projects. And they will not be alone, guided by three talented mentors, Stelios Karantanas, Greek jeweller who lives and creates in London, a jewellery designer and tutor, Hayley Kruger, South African, Oxfordshire-based designer, maker and teacher, and Barbara Yard, London-based jeweller, designer and maker. Alongside two business mentors, myself, Jessica Rose, founder of the London Jewellery School and Jewellers Academy, and Anna Campbell, our community manager, jeweller and teacher. Expect jewellery making, tool porn, techniques, business tips, gemstones, and most of all, tons of fun and creativity with this talented group of budding jewellers. If you are ready, let's get started. Welcome to day three of the Jewellers Retreat, the final day. We welcome back our lovely jewellers. Hey jewellers. Today they'll be making a piece of their choice that showcases their signature style. They need to use at least two types of metal in this piece. They have five hours to complete the project and that time starts now. So without further ado, let's get making. Sally. Hiya Jess. Day three. How is it going? All right. So tell me what you're making today. So this is your piece that showcases your signature style. Yeah. And some mixed metals. Yeah. It is a bracelet. Lovely. It is links. But each of those links, so they're kind of the feature of it. The style is based on mid-century modernism. I'm pretty obsessed with pattern. I got this sent over from Germany, but this is a piece of fabric that Lovely. kind of I see, kind of I see represents the it. You see with the, and what I'm doing is voiding out the centres. So will they all be the same or will you change no, the, um, give it more of an organic? They, the, the actual links are laser cut, so they are identical, but of course if you flip them or turn them, you actually have them slightly out of alignment, so they already look quite different. Right. And the clasp is an interesting point in any bracelet, isn't yeah. it? Like the, this. this is a this is the biggest challenge. So I'm doing a fold clasp, so but it's it, going to kind of like fold it, in. It's on a connect. hinge. It flicks over a bar, but it has to click. Yeah. And it's the tension mm. between the hinge and the bar and the bar yeah, that actually does it. With that in. Yeah, and they yeah. are beautiful, yeah. but they've got to be spot on otherwise it, they just <gasps> flop open so no pressure oh none at all it's fine <laughs> this is gonna be done in minutes just well yeah. i hope you're happy making it <laughs> as happy as you can be under pressure yeah, the first, first one is the class <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah. all right well good luck brilliant thanks yeah. jess <laughs> Uh, 
and the lovely Marquetta. Hello, Jess. How are you doing today? I am excited, but I I have to say I'm the most nervous because I've got quite a lot to do. All right, okay, so tell, tell me what you're making. So today it will be earrings. Lovely. And uh, that's the reason because it's all doubled. Two of everything. Two yeah. of everything. Um, I get it, yeah. I would like to cut out hummingbirds from Lovely. from the bag. So I will be using nine carat gold and silver. And uh, the nine carat gold will be around the stone Ooh, as a bezel. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice. The silver will be in the bag. So I will cut out the hummingbirds out from the silver. And then what I would like to do, set tube settings to brown diamonds from mm -hmm. each side. So you nice. would see the diamonds from front and the back as well. Well, I cannot wait, especially <laughs> after seeing your other two pieces. I know the quality of your work. So do you Thank think you'll you. get it done in the time? I am hoping. <laughs> <laughs> All the fingers crossed. All the fingers crossed. Yeah, I hope you do too. It'll be lovely to see it done. All right, I'll let you get on. I'll Thank you, you very on. much. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. Jasmine. Hello. How are you? I'm all right. I'm good. Good. You recovered from yesterday? Yes, I think so. Yeah. Just about. <laughs> Ready for another day. Wonderful, wonderful. Are you doing any flush setting today? Um, funny you should say that. I thought, <laughs> no. I thought, I'd, <laughs> thought I'd maybe chuck one in at the end, maybe. But the original design, there was no flush setting. I just really want to get one right. <laughs> You're going to be like the queen of flush setting. I doubt it. <laughs> I love it though, I love it. So tell us what you're going to make today. So during the diploma, a lot of my pieces that I made were based on um, Kandinsky and a lot of his work and he uses a lot of circles and quite a lot of his work feels quite geometric and really nicely balanced and I really wanted to get across that balance in his pieces. Um, so I thought I'd go with a bangle. So the, the main um, bangle is made out of silver mm -hmm. and then we've got gold sheet in these sections here Gorgeous. and then some little granules to go on the end there. Lovely. That might be flush That set. might be flush set, but I'm not going <laughs> to. But they weren't the meant to be flush set. set. No. <laughs> I just thought, well, I might chuck one of those yeah. in there. <laughs> Lovely. So your mixed metals are going to be silver and gold. They are, yeah. And wonderful. I think it looks amazing. I can't wait to see it done. Do you think you'll get it done in the time? I hope so. I said that about the other two and uh, they didn't go quite as smoothly as I'd hoped, but hopefully this time round. Fingers crossed. Well, my fingers right. will be crossed for you. Thank you. And uh, it looks incredible and I can't wait to see it done. Thank you very much. Yeah, have fun. Cheers. <laughs> All right, so I've just, just got to get this at the perfect angle, marking out where I can cut so that that can slot in that little section. What I'm going to do, I'll just anneal it so that it doesn't ping open when I cut it. So it's completely pointless me making those marks because now they're going to disappear. <laughs> Sally, how is it going? Um, pretty good. Yeah? Good. Just um, getting into it, measuring and marking. But um, you all set? You all ready for your <laughs> last challenge? <laughs> I am set, but it might be quite hectic for me today. Sure. Because I have to do everything twice. <laughs> of but, yeah. course, yes. So that should stop it hanging open when I saw it. Quite an angle here. Hopefully this won't just ping open. Cool. How do you feel about your project? Um, there's a little bit of luck as well as judgment <laughs> on this one. <laughs> but um, I'm hoping, I'm hoping it'll come off pretty well. I'm looking forward to it. It's a nice, very different make. I really want to me, see so. it in the end. Yeah. yeah me too. Exciting. Oh. So do you like making bangles? Um, I like wearing bangles. I love a good bangle. <laughs> Today the students will be guided by mentor Barbara Yard. 
Barbara is a trained goldsmith and passionate jewellery tutor. She honed her skills while studying jewellery and silversmithing at Sir John Cass University and now hand makes jewellery for clients from her workshop in London, while also teaching on the Diploma Programme at Jewellers Academy and filming courses with us. As a trained jeweller, her attention to precision and detail is reflected in her work. She uses a variety of techniques, combining precious metals with traditional processes such as wax carving, kayambu, and reticulation. Hi, Sally. Hey, hi, Hello. Barbara. Hello, how are things going? Um, pretty well. Good. Um, I've had a bit of a dilemma with my links. Yes. My question is, mm -hmm. at the moment, I've been thinking about these as being as flat as they are. Yeah. I'm wondering if I need to put a very, very slight curve in them with the bangle mandrel so that they are a little closer to the wrist. I would just give them a, the slightest, slightest curve, yeah. maybe not even on the mandrel, a, maybe a swage block, because on the swage block you've got the different um, widths uh, of curve because it's a gentle oh, curve. Oh, that's a good yeah. call. And that, then you know they're being consistent, consistent well. all the way through, because oh. if you use the mandrel, you might slide it up, slide it yeah, down, and yeah, that's a yeah. different side. But that will need a, to a completely gentle curve. If you're really, really good with your um, round pliers and you're feeling brave, you could <laughs> grab it at either side and just twist just it. Just almost pull it round. Just oh, a tip. Okay. But I would go with a swage block, the largest part on the largest All swage right. block. I, th I think I've got one spare. Yeah. So I think I'll try, try it, it and, and that make a and call. then see. All yes. right. Because I think it will still look good. I think it will still, I, but I think you're absolutely right. It'll just have that soft curve mm. going through the whole thing. Cool. Yeah. That's brilliant. Good well, luck. Thanks for that. Cheers. Looking lovely. Thank you. So I've got the bezels out from the pickle. Let's see if they fit. It does fit, but, oh, they need to be, make a little bit smaller. Because the nine karat gold is harder, so it springs more. So I need to make it a little bit smaller to get a proper snug fit. Okay, let's do it again. Hi, Marquetta. Hi, Barbara. How are things going? Slow. <laughs> oh, I know, that, the life of a jeweller. <laughs> yeah, uh, I need to speed it up. To okay. Be but I've got a question. Yeah. What I would like to do is to set brown diamonds as yeah. a tube setting at the bottom. Okay. So would you do it like a sweat soldering? Um, you can do, you could do a sweat soldering on there or yeah. you could just put one, one pillion of solder would be yeah. absolutely perfect, just hold it in place. But after you've got a flat section there yeah. and you've got a flat section there, you won't need, to, it won't be wobbling about too much because you've got two pieces touching. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Would you set the diamonds first and then the big stone or the other No, one? Um, I don't think it really matters whichever suits you best. If you could set your diamonds first, just because they're tiny <laughs> and it'll just get you going, or you could set the pair if you want to. Yeah. So it's kind of like. I'll see how I go. Good luck. It's gonna look. Sounds like it's gonna look really nice. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> if I make it in time. <laughs> Many jewelers come to start their own jewelry business after a career in other creative fields, like art teacher from Brighton, Jasmine. So I trained as a graphic designer at university. I did that for five years and then I ended up going into teaching. Whilst I was teaching, I found I wasn't really having much time for myself to be creative. So I decided to sign up to a course and I'd just go along and make whatever I wanted to make. Um, and I just completely fell in love with it. So I ended up looking for more courses and found the Jewelers Academy online course and signed up straight away. One of the main reasons that I signed up to the course was because it was mentored. So I had someone being able to give me feedback, mark what I was doing and tell me where I could improve. Um, that was a really important part for me signing up. 
I've actually set up my workbench in a little alcove in my living room, but you definitely don't need much space. I got myself a jeweler's bench. Um, all my tools are in drawers that you buy for putting stationery in. So it's very basic, but it totally works. I've already started selling a few things on Instagram. Um, I've got a little Etsy shop as well, um, where I'm getting a few sales from that. But the main aim is to have my own website, to start selling through my website. And I really like the idea of having it as a sort of sideline. So going alongside my work, maybe do my work part-time and jewellery part-time as well. So I've got a nice mixture, mixture of things going on. Hi Jasmine, Hiya. how are things going? Yeah, good. I've just got this out of the pickle. I've soldered this bit of gold sheet in now. Um, but it would be really good to know what I should do with this piece because there's going to be another gold bit in there and I'm just wondering what solder to use for that bit. Your sterling silver and nine carat gold is your inlay? Yes. So when you have sterling silver and nine carat gold, you can either use silver solder or nine carat gold solder. They work equally well. So most people will use sterling silver solder just because price wise and it does flow well and it, it will look not really nice just because the main part of your bangle is silver. Right, so I'm just going to use maybe silver solder. It's cheaper, I'd use it? It's cheaper silver solder okay. and it looks exactly the same. So I would use, you've got all your solder here and I would continue using easy solder just to make everything um, flow nicely. Okay, great. Brilliant. Great. Carry on and hope you're enjoying it. Thank you very Thanks. much. Cheers, Barbara. Hinge time, chaps. I'm really a bit panicked with doing this because it's... Yeah, they work or they don't. The middle part of your hinge needs to be wider than the outer two because otherwise it's not, it hasn't got strength. These clasps are going to be opened possibly thousands of times and they've got to work every time. So what I'm going to do is just solder this one on and then I'll trim it to fit in between that one. Hopefully, if this solders cleanly, I've just got to make sure, absolutely sure, they're aligned and then thread the wire through that makes the pin, if you like, which will be riveted on. Um, it's nowhere near the actual tube. I'm going to try and draw that bit of solder in. There we go. And that should fit that. So that bit just pinged out when that soldered, so I've had to squish it with these two pegs, little pin things, and I'm just going to go at re-soldering it. Okay, going again. I need to direct my flame a little bit, there we go, that's better. Sorted. The students today are focused on their signature style. It can take many years for a new jeweller to really grasp their favourite designs and techniques to work in. Our mentor for today, Barbara, loves to use reticulation in her work. Reticulation is the process of gently melting the surface of gold or silver metal to cause a ripple effect. Let's have a look at how this is done. I'm going to be reticulating this piece of silver. Best size for silver is slightly larger than you actually need. 0.8 millimetres to 1 millimetre thick is ideal. And normally you can do anything from one cycle to seven cycles. And a cycle is just heating your metal, pickling it, cleaning it, and then doing the whole thing over again. When you're heating your metal, make sure you keep your flame moving. You don't want your flame too close or you don't want it too far away. My piece of metal is fairly large, 
and it may take a little while just to get the metal moving and you'll know that the metal is moving because you'll actually see it I can see my metal the, the thinness of it it's starting to move I'm just going to keep going and the reason you keep your torch moving don't want to heat it in just one place because you don't want to just melt a small section of your metal. You want a nice, even flow throughout the whole thing. And now you can see that the metal is actually moving. And that is your reticulation. So what you can actually do, if you like the look of the metal there, you can just leave it there or what you can do after you've pickled it and after you've cleaned it, you can go back and do it exactly the same thing again to see if you can get the metal to move anymore and get a different texture on there. So now what I'm going to do is pick this up with my um, copper tweezers. I'm going to put this straight into the pickle. I'm not putting it into any cold water at all. It will sizzle, so don't worry. Let it pickle, let it clean. Then you take it out when you've finished and you, with a wire brush and some washing up liquid, just give it a scrub back and front till you get a really nice shine. Then if you like the look of what you've got, leave it there or you can come back and do another cycle until you find the finish that you want. Okay, so jewelers, we are at the midway point. So you've had two and a half hours on the pieces. We've got two and a half hours left. So there's still quite a bit of time, but just thinking about, you know, how you're getting on and what you're gonna do for the last two and a half hours, because they always go very quickly. Don't they, Jazz? I sure do. <laughs> how are you doing? Um, yeah, good. I'm just trying to get all the solder mm. that's spilled onto the gold off. Yeah. Yeah, um, you could have a go with the burrs if you like. Okay. Um, like a very soft rubber burr might be able to get it off, but it depends, you know, how thick the sheet is and if you... Yeah, it's not actually, it's, it's a nice size. It's not too thin, so yeah. maybe that might give be Give it the a answer. try. Yeah. This green one's quite soft. Okay. I find them quite useful, but maybe try on a bit of scrap first. Yeah. To see how you, see how you get on. Cool. Do Definitely. you need, uh, do you need this guy? Yeah. There you go. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, all right, scrap, not Yeah, not the right Yeah, I do a little bit of scrap for just to get used to it and see how abrasive it is, see if it's gonna do the job for you. Yeah, that feels all right, actually. Yeah, it's there's some other levels, but much. that one's quite light. I think it might just take it off without causing too much trouble. Yeah. No, oh. that's good. I'm gonna go with that. All righty, good Great. stuff. We'll give it a go. Thanks, And Jess. it's looking amazing. You're doing an awesome job already. Thank you. <laughs> cool. Moment. Look, 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 look. That is actually a functioning hinge, which is the critical thing with this. If that doesn't come together, nothing will. I'm really, really relieved and pleased because uh, it's quite a big job building these clasps. So, uh, yeah, really happy with that. Let's move on. Next bit. Right, so I just need to make a little hole for the granule to sit in. Just going to burr down a bit in the charcoal. this up evenly and it will start curling in on itself and hopefully it will go straight into that little hole that I burred. There we go. Ta -da. Just let that cool for a bit and then it's going to make a pretty good sound when it hits the water. That wasn't actually as good as I thought it was going to be. That's going to go on there. God, they go so round, don't they, when they're gold? That's really nice. Lovely. Happy with that. As the theme today is signature style, let's have a little look at what that means and why it's so important for a jewellery business. So why is a signature style really important for jewellers? 
The thing with a signature style is it's something that's recognizable. So what we want to achieve is a point where if I see your jewelry in a shop or a gallery or on Instagram or even on a random website, I can look at it and say, ah, oh, that's a piece of Anna Campbell jewelry. I know it, I recognize it. So often when jewelers start out, they're learning from their teachers, they're making projects, so there's nothing wrong with that, but it's not always their own style. And as we develop over time, we figure, oh, actually I like working in gemstones or silver or metal or whatever, and actually there's a certain way that I like to work or I like to make a lot of rings. And then the customer understands if they want that type of jewelry, where to go. So the, the thing we're trying to avoid is this more jumble sale approach where you make everything and uh, then the customer is a little bit confused, you know, what what is this? It's like, imagine walking into a shop and you know, okay, this shop is a DIY shop or it's a clothes shop or it's, and then you walk into a shop where there's just a little bit of everything it's a little bit more confusing. So for a small business starting out, we definitely recommend developing that signature style. Having a niche in what you're making makes you a lot more powerful and you actually grow a lot quicker that way. But I think you're right to say it's something that develops over time. A signature style can just come from so many different places, anywhere that you're inspired, whether that's you know, going to museums or parks, to you know, in nature um, or by the sea, whatever that is for you, um, your customer is going to be inspired by that as well. Uh, and that's just, it's, it's lovely to be able to develop that and then develop those relationships with customers who are really interested in what you do. Yeah, absolutely. And as someone once said, just make the pieces you really love making. Because when you do that, you will develop a style over time and your customers will love them too. Definitely. Okay, so jewelers, sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but we have one hour left. So it's the final 60 minutes of making time. Have a think about how you're gonna finish off your pieces, get the stone set, get them polished. One hour to go. You can do it. You can do it. <laughs> How's it going, Marquetta? I don't think I'll finish it in time because I, I still have the black marks. I'm trying to polish the piece before I set the stones. I think you're absolutely fine here. All you need to do is make sure you have a really fluffy calico notch which you've got and you just keep polishing the black away and when all that is polished away your piece will be super super shiny. Don't need to worry, just keep polishing and it'll be fine. Thank you. Hiya, you're right. Hi, how's it going? Yeah, really well. Um, I've actually finished. Lovely. And there's half an hour to spare. Woohoo! Which um, that's really, really good. Yeah. This is a stunning piece. It's absolutely lovely. I'm really pleased with yeah, it. Yeah, it's got a nice weight to it as well, mm -hmm. and it just looks the coloured metals, the man of the metals. You should be really pleased with that. I am really, really happy. Yeah. Um, and with half an hour to spare. Half better. an hour to spare. Yeah. I think just don't stone set is the um, Maybe moral. the moral, <laughs> don't stone set. No, and I don't think that piece actually needs it. Definitely. I think it would take away, because I couldn't think where you would actually put it to yeah. make the stone shine at their best, really. So I think as it is, it's perfect. Definitely, no, yeah. I'm happy. Good. Hi Sally, that looks interesting. How's it going? I've started to take some material out here mm -hmm. so that it curls back on itself. Right. But I've got to fold it up mm -hmm. and then curl it back on across. itself to keep it flat. I think that's fine. Yeah. And I would anneal that just a smidge just uh, to soften okay. it up. Because remember, every time you do anything to your metal, you you'll work it hardening mm. it. And this is so small, you don't want to bend it and snap it off. Sure. So I would uh, just try and anneal it gently. Literally on the end. So yeah, don't, to, so I don't I, anneal, you have to anneal know, the whole but, thing. But just but a bit more. Yeah, here. there. But that should curl really nicely. All and right. I think you've taken it off it just enough, perfectly. Brilliant. I've yeah. done that. That's the one I've got to do to all of these all now, of so that was yeah. my... But just a smidge off, that's less than a millimetre, half a mil, yeah. even less than that. Just to give it that... Yeah, flexibility Flexibility. There. Yeah. Brilliant. Thanks, Barbara. That's, that's my really, pleasure. Really good.
Okay, so jewelers, I know it's stressful, but it's the final 15 minutes, so get those final little bits done. You can do it, it's that final, final push, last bit. Go for it. Okay, I think I took on too much today. Is there anything I can do? Yes, please, if you have time. Right, <laughs> uh, what do you need? This earring, tube setting. Yeah. Um, so this is a bit of improvising, so... Help me gently. Okay, so jewelers, that is your time up. Put down whatever you're working on and get your pieces onto the mentors table, ready for feedback. A massive well done today. I know that there's been many hurdles along the way, but you guys did it. So massive well done. So Barbara, end of day three, how did the jewellers do today? I think all three of them have done a wonderful job and produced beautiful jewellery. Absolutely, such different styles again, their signature style really coming out today. Yes, definitely so, three completely different pieces of jewellery, Yeah, wonderful. Wonderful, well, let's have a look at them. So if we start with Jasmine, she actually finished early today. I know, she did and I think it's a perfect piece, I don't think she was thinking about putting stones on there, but I personally think that would detract from the whole design mm -hmm. in general. It's all geometric pieces on there. That's really tricky to do. I think she's done a great job on that. She has, she yeah. nailed it, didn't she? Mm -hmm. So if she was gonna create this piece again, or something similar, is there any feedback in terms of what she could work on or what she could improve on? Just a little bit on her solder here. I would just say, just not put so much solder, mm. and maybe just a little bit less, and she just make sure she fills in all those gaps and maybe on the piece that she's inlaying, just do a little um, tunnel there so you've got a little groove that will sit into the round wire so it all just sits mm. snugly. Oh, I see, so kind of like match the sheet to the wire with a bit yes. of needle file action. Exactly, mm, yes. Nice tip. Yeah. Okay, wonderful, brilliant. And then going on to Sally's wonderful bracelet and this incredible clasp. That class <laughs> is absolutely lovely. I think this whole piece is just lovely. So things you like about it, anything she could improve on for next time? Things I like, the shape of it, the flow of it. Mm -hmm. I think it flows really nicely, sits on the wrist really nicely, and it's quite comfortable. The only thing I would say, I think to myself, your findings, just your jump rings there. I would do those in nine carat white gold because sterling silver is quite soft. Mm -hmm. So these are meant to last, you want these to last for a while. And then the nine carat white gold is nice and hard. When you put it in the polishing barrel, it will really harden up and it's not going to wear away very easily. Yeah. But other than that, lovely. Great tip. So if you want your findings to last longer for something like this, which is quite, quite a big it's expense. It's a unique piece. Very unique. It's yeah. not something you're going to be making lots of. So you can just push the boat out. And the, and the wires and things aren't going to be expensive because you don't need loads of yeah. material for that. Lovely. I love the gold section Yeah, I think well. that gold nice just makes touch. it really pop. Yeah, really, they really, really use pop. the mixed metals well, don't yeah, they? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And last but not least, we have Marquetta's earrings. 
with the beautiful hummingbirds on the back. She had a tricky time with these. Didn't she, she did, but I think <laughs> she's pulled it off, and I think they look absolutely lovely. Yeah. I just think the jade and the diamond, the little flower on the back. I just think it all just, and I can feel these, even though I've not tried them on. I think they'll have a nice movement to them, a really um, good flow to them. What things worked well and what, what could she improve on if she was to make them again? I think with her polishing, I would have put this all in the polishing barrel, just left it for a bit longer, mm. used your rouge powder or your rouge stick to go over this to make the shine really bright on this. Her settings are done really nicely mm -hmm. and she just needed to polish up really her gold sitting on her silver. But other than this, this is a, a nicely done job, a yeah. really nice piece. Yeah. And that all comes down to time, doesn't it? It does. I think uh, an extra half an hour, 45 minutes. She would, she, have would have, she would have had that. She would have done yeah. that quite easily. We did. We, it is tight for time on yeah. the show, and you know, normally jewelers would take a couple of days sometimes just, to make these. Yeah, pieces. especially a bespoke pieces like this. Yeah, you're gonna take your time just to get it spot on. Yeah, they did amazingly. Yeah. So you've got some mini awards I to give have, them. So I come have. and share with us what they Where are and who those? they're for. So I, we we had a look at everything, and we've just decided to give them an award to say whether it's one I would wear, great design, technically. Yeah. So here we go. My one I would wear would be Marquetta's. Oh, lovely. Nice earrings. Because I, I, I just think that is something I would wear all the time. You could dress it up or dress it down, which is really, really great. Perfect. Great design, I think is Jasmine. Yeah. I just think, just technically, that's very Kandinsky. It's very now. Just imagine earrings, necklaces, great. the whole collection. The whole collection. <laughs> and technically, is Sally. Sally. Just because of the construction of the whole thing, she laser cut it. I just think it's lovely. Yeah, wonderful. Well, I think they're going to be very pleased with those. Good. Thank you so they much, be. Barbara. Should we go and find the jewellers? Yes. As it is the final day of the Jewellers Retreat, we have some awards to give the lovely Jewellers for a massive congratulations on all the hard work that they've done. It's not been an easy three days, it's been very intense and they have done incredibly well. We couldn't be more proud of them. So first up, Jasmine, please come and get your award. Congratulations. Well done. And. Sally, the lovely Sally, another award for you. <laughs> well done. And last but not least, the wonderful Marquetta. Here you go. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Well done, my love. And we need the mentors. Yay. Both of them. So lovely. Lovely. <laughs> well done. Brilliant. I'm actually really Definitely. proud of myself. Oh, you should be. You should be. It's a big achievement. Thank you, chaps. Thank you so much. <laughs> that brings us to the end of day three and the end of the retreat. I hope you've enjoyed watching these jewellers go through this process as much as we've enjoyed putting it together. If you're not already, be sure to follow all of them on social media for some love and support. For now, we're going to hit the beach for a nice relaxing stroll. Until next time, from me and all of the jewellers, Happy Making! <laughs> Did you do it? <laughs> Did you do it? <laughs> 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 <laughs>